Welcome to another hot wire cutter design video from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. I'm Leon. In the last hot wire cutter design video, we talked about a vertical hot wire cutter. I'll put a link to that video up here in the upper right hand corner. But in this video, we're going to talk about a bow hot wire cutter. So in this case, as you can see, this hot wire cutter is shaped a lot like a bow saw. We'll talk about the design of this hot wire cutter. If you haven't watched that previous hot wire video, you might want to do that because I'm going to talk more in that video about some of the details that I won't cover in this video. Now, of course, the most important part of a hot wire cutter is the hot wire. And you can see that here. I'll give you a little pink background so you can kind of see it. So there's the hot wire on this one. It goes from the bottom of this arm to the bottom of this arm. So there's two important features you want in your hot wire. One is that it has to be hot enough to melt the polystyrene foam that you're going to cut. And you want it to be straight as you can make it. About the only way to make a hot wire straight is you have to put tension on it. The way I did on the vertical hot wire cutter is I used three of these five pound blocks and I hung it on one end of the hot wire. The other end went over an arm, went vertical down into a table and was held on the other end. So I have a constant 15 pounds of tension on that hot wire. I'd like to have a constant 15 pounds of tension on this hot wire, but it's really not practical to have 15 pounds of weight hanging somewhere off of this bow. Now there's a couple other ways you can do it. And the one I chose is to use a spring, but I still want to get at least 15 pounds of tension on this hot wire. Now the spring I chose can handle up to around 20 pounds of tension. At least that's what it says on the spec. So that'll work pretty good. Now it's not going to be a constant tension. As the hot wire gets hot, it expands, which means this is going to contract up here and I have a little bit less tension here on this spring. What I can do though is heat up the hot wire and adjust the length of this spring, in other words, expand it out, so I have 15 pounds of tension then. Of course, one of the consequences of that is once I cut the power to the hot wire, the hot wire is going to shrink down, which is going to cause this spring to expand and there's going to be more tension. Not a lot, but there will certainly be more. So I wanted to figure out, well, how far is this spring going to stretch with 15 pounds on it? So that's what I did. I fixed one end of the spring to a little suspension arm, and then I hooked the other end of the spring up to my 15 pounds of weight. Let it hang down, and I measured how far that spring has stretched to get that 15 pounds. Then what I did is I turned on power to my hot wire, I hooked up this cable, and I adjusted where the cable runs through this end, I pulled on it until I got that same exact extension on the spring. Then I knew I had 15 pounds here, and I made my arm lengths the same distance from the pivot point. That way I knew I had also 15 pounds of tension here down on the wire. And then I tightened down my clamp here, and I was done. Now, I don't want to keep 15 pounds of tension on this all the time. My wood would end up bowing. So I have a loop on this end so that I can remove this loop. There's a little groove that the loop goes into. So whenever I'm not using the bow, I remove the loop from this end, then it's loose. Now these pieces of wood may end up bowing a little bit over time. Well, if that's the case, then I'll just readjust that. I'll just loosen it up, pull this little more cable out until I get the right stretch on my spring, and then tighten it up. And I'll still have 15 pounds of tension, both on this cable and on my wire. This middle part of my bow is going to be in compression. Both this is pulling in and this is pulling in. This is trying to push out. So tension, tension, this is in compression. So it's going to have about 30 pounds of compression here. If you add this and this together, you'll get 30 pounds. I could have made this out of more stout material if I wanted to. I just made it out of two one by what, about one and a quarter inch boards. Actually, they're three quarter inch by about one and a quarter. I screwed them together here in the center for a little handhold so that when I go to squeeze it, these boards won't compress together, it'll feel nice and solid. And in addition, with so much compression on these, I didn't want them to bow out or bow in just because of that compression, so this kind of helps hold them steady. I could have also done it here in the middle, but it doesn't seem to be necessary. I have pivot points here for my arms. This is just all thread, one quarter inch, with a nut on each end. And again, same thing on this end. 
To attach the wire on the end of the arm, I put a nice little curve on here so that the wire could wrap around this curve with less chance of breaking. Really sharp curves will probably cause the wire to break. I also cut a little groove here in the end of the arm to hold the wire. It's only about an eighth of an inch deep. So as I'm pulling it through the foam, it won't slide along the end of the arm. It has something to hold it. Now the wire is electrically connected to the end of my feed wire on both this end and the other end with a bolt. Now the wire is just wrapped around the bolt twice and then I wrapped it around itself. And then on the same bolt, I have an electrical connector so that I have electricity running from my feed wire to my wire. And the other end is set up identically. And while we're talking about hot wire, the wire that I'm using is stainless steel safety wire. Now this is safety wire that's used on aircraft to keep bolts from turning. And just in case you're curious, the alloy is T302 slash 304. It is 25 thousandths in diameter, which is 0.64 millimeters. And this container here has one pound of it. It's fairly inexpensive, less expensive than nichrome wire is. Now to feed the electricity to the hot wire, I already talked about it on this end. We have a little feeder wire and I had a little extra, so I bunched it up. Now this wire happens to be something very similar to lamp cord. I had an old space heater that died, so I just cut the electrical cord off of it and I used it. That's about six feet long. And then I got the same situation on the other end. Feeder line comes up here. I zip tied it to my cross piece. And then I used an electrical cord because this clearly wasn't enough wire. So I put in another piece. I'm going to have to uh, do a better job of hooking this up a little bit later. And this hooks up to my transformer. This transformer is a Calred brand. The number on it is 45-740. I bought this back in the early 1990s and I don't remember where I got it. It's probably from Aircraft Spruce. I have no idea if they still carry it or not. But I know I've seen this in a lot of other places that you can get them. I'm sure you can find it online. Anyway, this one takes 110 volts input and it has a knob on the top to set how much voltage comes out. So the higher the voltage is, the more current you're gonna run through the wire and the hotter your wire will get. On my vertical hot wire cutter, I have a greater length of wire. And what I've been using is around 23 volts or so on it. That's a fairly good cutting speed. And I get a fairly clean cut. I found out for this particular bow cutter though, I need about 17, 16 volts because it's a shorter wire, so I don't need as much voltage running through it. I just turned on the power to the hot wire cutter. I want to do a little demonstration of cutting some foam. And as I was heating up, I was noticing that my spring is collapsing a little bit more than it should. It looks like since I built this, which was what, five days ago, it has stretched out, some things have settled in, so I'm gonna to have to readjust my top cable to get my tension back to 15 pounds. Right now I'm at the 17 volts, so that's about right. So let's go ahead and do a quick cut through this. Now, you may have been able to tell, you may not. When your hot wire first enters the foam, it's hot and it cuts fast, but within about a half an inch, it slows down. That's because cutting this styrofoam will cause the wire to cool down just a little bit. So if you're testing your hot wire to see how fast it cuts, you have to cut at least an inch to see how much it's gonna slow down. Now on this little amount we did here, you probably would not be able to tell, but as you're cutting, because you don't have a whole lot of tension on it, the center of the bow is going to bow back a little bit. So let's say we're pulling foam down through this way. This bow is gonna bow down a little bit. So you're gonna have a bow shaped like this. Let me do a little demonstration to see if I can show you how it's going to bow. Now I got a little less tension on it, so it's liable to bow a little bit more. But it, hopefully you'll be able to see it. I actually have the wrong colored shirt on for this. But let me run down through this, and you'll see it start bowing down. Now it's not too horrible, but there is some bow there. So imagine that through an entire piece of foam, about four foot wide. You'd get a little more gradual bow. That means that the middle of your foam, where the wire is, is going to be trailing behind the outer edges. And you have to keep that in mind if you're hot wire cutting. Now sometimes it won't matter. If you're cutting a straight line, it shouldn't matter. But 
Because of that, you have to be really careful about corners. What you need to do is to come up to the corner in your template, stop, and it shouldn't take more than two, three seconds for the bow to catch up. So count one, two, three, and then start going in whatever your new direction is along the edge of the template. And that's really what these bow saws are for, is cutting along templates on a wide piece of foam. Now these things are so long that if I had a four foot wide piece of foam, and that's what I built this for, so I could cut a four foot wide piece of foam, this distance from this bolt to this bolt is 48 inches, and I have tilted arms out, so I'm about 52 inches or so. So I can make sure I can cut about a four inch deep piece of foam. That's about 48 inches wide. But back to how you're using it, since this is so wide, if I had a piece of foam over here and over here, and there was a template on this side of this edge of the foam, and then another one over here, I cannot see those templates from where I'm at. Now I could move myself over to one edge and I could at least see one template, but I wouldn't be able to see the other. And almost always on these templates, you're gonna have some reference points marked out on them where the line between those two templates is straight. And what you wanna do is to reach those marks at the same time on each template. Now the templates don't have to be identical. Frequently on a tapered wing, you're gonna have one template that's bigger than the other. For example, you wanna start at the nose, both ends at the same time when you go in. And then by the time you get to the trailing edge, you want both ends to exit at the same time. Now, since they're different sizes, one side's going at a different rate than the other, and you're gonna have those reference lines on there. And you really need two people because you can't see both sides of the foam. Now, generally you'll have one person who's kind of in charge and they're calling out numbers. You're gonna have numbers on your references. And you're gonna have them like every inch, every half inch, something like that. And so you're gonna start at one, half, two, half. So one person will be calling out where their end is it's a responsibility of the other person to make sure that they're at that same reference point when you call it out. So they're gonna to have to adjust their speed to match what you're doing as far as calling out your reference numbers. So that's typically how you're gonna use a bow saw. Now, if you looked at my UWS-1 rudder plug video, part three, you'll see that I used it by myself, but I had a very unique situation where it was okay if I did not get it exact. I was cutting a groove out of about a 40 inch piece of foam and I kind of cheated on one end and I had, instead of having a template on that, I had a little guide that let me go down into where my template was and then my template was pretty small and so I could actually feel the other end when it hit corners. That's really all I cared about. That wasn't gonna be a visible surface, it's actually gonna be underneath some glue and some wood so it really didn't matter if it was perfect. So in some cases, you can use it by yourself. Well, there you have it. There's no need to go out and buy a hot wire saw. You can build one yourself easy. And even if you have to buy all the materials, it's still fairly inexpensive. Now for me, I got lucky. I already had the hot wire because I made the vertical hot wire cutter and I had a extra, <laughs> I have nearly a pound of this wire left, so I got plenty of that. I already had the bolts, the all thread. I did go out and buy the spring and I did go out and buy my top cable because I didn't have those but the wood, the zip ties, the screws, the bolts, the electrical wires, and the transformer, I already had all those. So really for me, this was very cheap. I only spent about $10 in this specific hot wire cutter. So it was pretty cheap, just a little bit of time. Well, I hope you guys found this video useful. Hopefully you can go out and build your own hot wire cutter and start cutting some airfoils into styrofoam. Well, I've got to go and readjust the tension on my string so I can get it back to 15 pounds. Until next time.